Hi everybody, welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen. Sorry about that a couple of minutes ago, but you know, technical things, these do go wrong. Uh, things do go wrong. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> It's the joys of technology. So um, if we have any problems, do let us know, but hopefully this should go perfectly fine. So we had a fantastic audience um, joining us before, so hopefully you are all logging on now and joining us again. So I'm glad to be back in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. I've been away on holiday for two weeks and left you in the lovely capable hands of Maria and Laura. And I watched from my holiday destination and saw that they did a grand job. So, and also thank you to my daughter, Laura, Laura, who did each Thursday morning session and Claire Corbett and Marion Frost from Patchwork Cutters for coming along and hosting for us while I was away which was great fantastic demos they did so I've got a lovely lady in the kitchen today she's called Suzanne Esper and she is um, a cake decorator cake designer she makes the most amazing wedding cake so I'm just going to give you a sneaky flash and then in a minute I'm going to get Suzanne to tell you about them so let's just have a little flash first and we'll tell you a little bit more about Suzanne there we go beautiful cakes yeah so I'm going to send Suzanne over now and she's going to quickly if you can see her in between the cakes <laughs> she's going to quickly tell you a little bit about the cakes and what we're doing today <laughs> yeah. Go for it. What an introduction. So, oh, sorry, yeah, I'm the <laughs> okay, so I've got these are my cakes that I've brought down. These are demonstrating, well, they've got the stencils on that I'm going to be demoing tonight. This one here is based on a bride's dress and it's called the Alexandra Range and it comes with three stencils. It's absolutely gorgeous. The one next to it is one of the new Art Deco um, cakes. So this one is the fountain stencil and then the one just next to it is the actual feather border. So I'm going to be demoing a couple of different ways to do the stencils. Yep, fantastic. So we're back. So let me tell you a little bit more about Suzanne. Suzanne actually does online tutorials. She has a fantastic Facebook page. Do pop over and like her page. If you want to know more about her tutorials, private message her. She'll tell you all about them and she'll tell you how to join. You definitely should give them a try. Um, and I'm joining too. Can't wait. <laughs> so do you want to tell them the name of your Facebook group? Sure. Um, so my Facebook group, I've got Suzanne Esper Cake School. So that's my main page where you can see all my classes and stuff. I'll have some announcements on there of my night school. So the night school that I run is Modern and Sugar Flowers. So you'd be welcome to join. It'd be amazing. They're amazing. Seriously, they are amazing. So let's talk to you about the stencils. Look at this bad boy. Mm -hmm. So what's this one called? This one is the Feather Art Deco Feather. Where um, modern meets Art Deco. Absolutely beautiful. Now, just to let you know that Suzanne designs for Evil Cake Genius. So any of you guys in America, you can actually buy them direct from Evil Cake Genius. You guys here in the UK, you come through us, or you can go to Evil Cake Genius website as well. Or if you want them very quickly, we have a small range here. We're gonna to keep topping up the range, but we weren't sure which were gonna be your favorites and which not. So we just brought in a small selection. So it will be a first come, first serve. So if you want them, make sure you you grab them tonight um, because it will take another two to three weeks before yeah, we get stocking right. again so um, like I say we've just started off so this is the feather feather and this is for the really big tall cake so can you see this one over here Laura yeah so this is for this how deep is that as uh, same about eight inches and that's the same as that one there isn't no, that it one's about seven yeah but that fits this one yeah um, yeah it would do yeah okay and then this one here is this one is the fountain art deco fountain mm -hmm. so we've got that. and this one comes in a set now this is the 56 piece set yeah so this one is the alexandra lace mix and match comes with two alphabets so you can have a monogram for your bride and your groom or whoever it is going to this one will fit a double barrel tier on its own um, and then in addition to that we have this other one which is the three tier version which I showed you earlier. It's also got two alphabets but it also comes with two extra stencils for those other tiers so it's a really good this one. This is the one for the big white wedding cake if you want to make it easier. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the best one. Right, they're all fantastic but that one's good. This one is round the other way. It's Alexandra Vine. So this goes with that <laughs> other set. It. So this one's beautiful as well. Um, so that's the Alexandra range. 
And then these are the small this ones. This one is for a standard size tier. Um, so this is the Fountain Art Deco. So basically, if you're given somebody like a four inch tall tier, this is what you would want to use. However, if you're going a little bit higher, then you would go for the double barrel version of this. So we're just going to stop for a moment. Are we live or have we got problems again? We are live, but unfortunately we are starting to freeze again. So wow. just bear with us a moment. It is cold out there. <laughs> it is. It's cold in here. I know. Well, yeah. We'll just um, just give us a second, guys. We'll just keep showing you the Suzanne's cakes and what we've got here. <laughs> and we'll get it the right way up. <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna carry on simply because before we actually disconnected and it was saying the podcast was interrupted. So we're hoping it will come back again. Sure. Right. So for you guys out there in America, you can go over to Evil Cake uh, Evil Cake Cake Stencils, <laughs> Evil Cake Genius, and go to their stencils and look down for Susan Esper, and you'll see all the wonderful stencils. We haven't got the whole range here tonight. We've took a selection of her top sellers. We've got them here, a small range of them. Okay, but they are beautiful. We've already shown you the cakes, and Susanna is going to show you how to use them, providing this live work she does say that she's the jinx and I believe it but I'm hoping three times we're going to be lucky we're going to get on with this aren't yeah, we absolutely. okay so we've got lots to show you so just a couple of things in case you missed it last time Suzanne has her own Facebook page and she has her, her own online tutorial page as well and she also has a little secret group to join so <laughs> if you <laughs> like we all do sugar and crumbs on that cake <laughs> so if you've not joined our group ours is not a secret but it is a closed group which is sugar and crumbs all about cake. Suzanne's group is? I have Suzanne Esper Cake School and I've also got um, a stencil group where you can buy some of these stencils as well and I have my online sugar flower group which is a secret one. That's the secret. I knew there was one secret one in there. <laughs> Anyhow, so you must go pop over, like her page, join them, and if you're into flowers, making flowers, she does the most amazing online right. tutorial. So you do <laughs> need to watch them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have got the wish list set up. We've got plenty of goodies in the wish list. We've got all Suzanne stencils in there. I put in um, Karen Davies Christmas molds in there. Patchwork cutters Christmas molds. They're not uh, Christmas cutters in there. They're not all in there. I'm still adding them to the website. Katie Sue have brought out a new mould, which is the unicorn eyes, ears and um, horn mould. That's in there as well. And we've also got these little bad boys. Because in a couple of weeks, we've got a fabulous lady called Lynn Oakley, Kurt Oakley coming along to show us how to make high heels. So there's two sets of those, um, different ones. And I've also got a few other sets to put on the website, which I'm hoping I'll get on by tomorrow. So they're in the wish list. Extra large nozzles as well. They're on the wish list. So everything is in there. Yeah. So it looks like we're still going stronger. We're still going strong, girls. We're not exactly strong, but we're better than it was. <laughs> Has um, the audience come back? <laughs> the audience is coming back. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to stick with it and just see what's going on. And um, we are, we are far, far better than it was before. Um, we're not one hundred percent, but it's far better than it was before. So I think we're just unfortunately going to have to stick with it and see what happens. We are getting text messages from John Lowe telling us. How it's going. So, um, anything you want to ask, do ask. But I think if you can, try and hold them back. And you know what? You can message us afterwards and you can put the messages on afterwards. And Suzanne will answer them later or tomorrow when, whenever she gets back home to Sunny Scotland. <laughs> she can come back on the live and she can answer all your questions then. Just because we are having problems tonight, let's try and keep the live on topic. So what it's about, the stencils. So nothing about your personal life or anything like that. Let's just keep it on topic and let's keep going on. Yeah. So I'm going to move these bad boys out of the way and I'm going to let Sue... Oh, I forgot to tell you, I would think of my pinny. <laughs> yeah, she's got one too. So um, I meant to say, we are at Cake and Bake this weekend. Any of you guys who are coming down, we're travelling down on Thursday, setting up. I'll be doing a little live there at the setup because um, there's no Thursday live. We are there Friday, Saturday, Sunday exhibiting, okay? If anybody wants tickets for Cake and Bake, do message me. I've got plenty of tickets. All you have to do is like and share. So I've got plenty of tickets. And we're also going to be at Cake International as well at the beginning of November. I've got tickets for that, but we'll talk about that next week. Let's get this show out of the way first. It's going to be a smashing show. Make sure you're there if you can make it this weekend. All right, so I'm going to get out of the way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, thanks very much for joining tonight and thanks Carol for inviting me down. So as you know, I'm here to demonstrate some of these new stencils. So I thought first thing we're going to have to do is make up some royal icing. Um, you can buy royal icing pre-made, you can buy ready bagged up royal icing where you just add water and Carol's got it in her wish list. So I sometimes use, um, I quite like the Squire's Kitchen um, brand because it's nice and fine. Um, but also we're going to make up some fresh tonight using meringue powder um, from Wilton using Carol's very own sugar and crumbs, white chocolate and raspberry and it smells amazing so I'm going to give it a wee try. So I'm going to go ahead and use this KitchenAid which I don't have a KitchenAid, I've got a Kenwood, I'm a Kenwood girl so I might fluff this up but um, I'm going to go ahead, right so to make royal icing with the meringue powder you should follow the instructions on the pack um, what we're going to do is add 3 tablespoons of meringue powder, so that's about 15 grams roughly, to about 500 grams of icing sugar. So if you've got those handy packs of sugar and crumbs, use the whole bag. Just 3 tablespoons of meringue powder and you're going to be adding between 5 and 6 tablespoons of water. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in the icing. Oops, I don't even know how to get that off, that's fine. We're just going to have a, a nice that's sugar, sugar problem. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Just one second. I'm just going to just double check because that camera's not connected on the mixer one, so we can't see what's in the mixer at the moment. So just give us one second and no we'll bother. just reconnect that camera just because we don't want anyone to miss anything. No bother at all. Well, they weren't going to see anything anyhow with the amount of sugar that's just put through <laughs> the camera. <laughs> So what are we looking at? I'm just going to show you the cakes. Yeah, yeah so we're on to the cakes at the moment, just for anyone yeah. who missed them before. So as you can see on these, um, these are the ones that Suzanne's used the um, stencils on. They're absolutely beautiful. They are beautiful. Wish I could make them like that. I could tell you about some more royal icing then if you like. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's three tablespoons of your meringue powder. Now what you can do, if you ever get little hard lumps, you can sift them. But I prefer to live on the dangerous side and just not bother. Okay, and then we are going to be adding five tablespoons of water. What I tend to do is add four first and then if I need the fifth, I'll add it. Because you don't want to make up a too runny solution at the start. So that's my four. So I'll hold off adding the fifth until I give this a wee. Mm -hmm. Carol's just going to help me put this down. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to start at number one. Hi, nice and low. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like that. <laughs> okay, can we see the mixture now? Once it starts to, once it starts to clump, I'll turn it up a little bit. But I can tell normally quite quickly if I need to add that extra tablespoon early on. Okay, so I'll just turn this up so. Yep. Okay, so I need, I definitely need the water. You can see there, it's not coming together. It's still quite nice and hard. Oh my goodness, I can taste that ice and sugar. It's amazing. White chocolate and raspberry. I'm getting my Tastes sugar delicious. fix. <laughs> okay, so it's still a little bit thick. starting to come together but I still need to add more water so I'll just turn it down a bit before I do that. Right. So that is us on six or seven tablespoons so far. Right? Oh my goodness. So this is looking a little bit like rough icing at the minute. But we'll let it take hold before I add any more water because I really don't want to add too much and then I can't take it off. Slow down this Right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften it down, scrape it down, and then I'm going to add that wee bit of water. Okay, so I'll just grab a spatula. Open it up, Emily. Just smell nice, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got a cupcake. Right, okay, so. Right, then. Actually, Having lifted that up, I can see it's a wee bit wet, so that's fine. I'm just going to scrape it. I'll push it up. <laughs> oh my God. Push it up. And twist. There, there you go. go. I'm just going to scrape it down because the last thing you want to do is add 
too much water and actually I'm glad I didn't because I just need to scrape this down and remix it and it'll be fine. That smells gorgeous. I hate to keep saying that, but that does <laughs> smell gorgeous. It smells really good. Yeah. So this is white chocolate and raspberry. Mm. I'm going to be using some of these in my macarons, that's oh. for sure. This is actually quite a nice consistency. So I'm going to go back and mix it just for another minute or two, just so that it makes sure it's all coming together. And then we'll, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Right, so push it in, twist it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a little bit of white water. Easy when you do I love the kitchen because I think it looks beautiful, but I like the kitchen. I don't know. Okay, so I just wanted to get on the mix just to make sure it's that sort of fine. Um, and then I'm going to turn this off. Like that. Take this up, get this off. There we go. See, I'm getting used to this. Mm -hmm. Give it a little rattle to get I'm it. I'm get good at this. I know, but I'll be going in my bag here. <laughs> I'm partially pink. Right, okay, so then what I would do if I wasn't ready to use it, I've got a damp towel which you would must put over your bowl and that's going to stop your royal icing crisping. So I've actually got some that I've already mixed down, but I'll show you how to get it into the sort of state that you need it in order to work, okay? So let me just move this out of the way. Okay, so we've got our ice and sugar, and I do have some that I've prepared already. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab just a bowl, take a small amount out. So Maria needs to see everything you do. Okay, so just taking a little bit out like that. Um, I'm going to test it first because I feel like it's got, it's quite wet anyway. So what I do is, I'm just going to grab, I've got a little bit of ice and rolled out. So this is just purple caramel massa. Um, and I've got a stencil somewhere as well, which is here. Okay, so in order to test your icing, I like to use small stencils on just a little bit of scrap icing. Um, I've got one of the scrapers, these will come with your stencil. I'm going to put my icing on and I'm going to scrape it off and I'm going to look at what the, the actual stencil transfer looks like underneath. And if I feel that it's running too much, I'll add more icing sugar. Um, and if I feel it's just right, then we're going to use it. So let me just grab that um, spatula. Okay, so for this one, we're obviously we're not attaching it, it's just we're just going to hold it flat. So take a little bit of um, your icing. Just place it on top, and this is just to give us an idea if this is ready to use. Okay, so just a little bit there. Spread that round. Okay, you, you don't want to try and lift it because we're trying not to get it underneath. And then very carefully just draw that towards you and scrape off the excess. If you don't have one of these little acetate scrapers, you can use like an old unused credit card that's been cleaned. I was going to say, that's what she did oh. arrive with. And credit that's card. beautiful. <laughs> right, okay, so we know that that Can is you absolutely... you up to this one? Lower down. That's it. Brilliant, so thank you. It's absolutely perfect. I and mean, we've got a little bit of smudge in there, but that's actually just because I pushed it under the stencil myself. Okay, so that is really nice. It's not bleeding, it's not running, and we'll use that. So rather than wasting it, I'm going to put a little damp cloth over the top so that we know we're ready to use it. If you don't put the damp cloth over the top, it's just going to dry out, you'll get crispy bits. And when you scrape that into your stencil, it tends to pull out a lot of the royal icing on your cake and you get a really horrible, jaggy look of royal icing, so it's not, it's not ideal. You also need to clean your scraper in between using it, because again, the royal icing hardens up quite fast. You just have to make sure you've got some clean materials. So I'm going to pop these out of the way. Um, now that we know we're happy with what we have, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to demo stenciling this Alexandra stencil, which I'll just show you again. It's this stencil here. This is your three-tier Alexandra, and that's the big, very tall white cake that we showed you earlier. So we're just going to show you that again. Are you going to carry that over here? Yeah? No, I'm just <laughs> going to bring this across. <laughs> Okay, so this is the cake 
that I'm actually going to stencil just now. So I've actually went ahead and stenciled the top and the bottom tier. I'm now going to stencil this tall one. The Alexandra stencil was designed based on a bridge dress and she wanted this really grand cake that was going to be really nice and tall tiers. So that's perfectly suited these very popular double barrel tiers that you've maybe heard about. And all that means is there's maybe six or seven layers of cake in the inside. So when they cut it in half, you'll get double the portions, but also lends to a really, really deep tier that looks very extravagant and grand. And I absolutely love working with the deep tiers. So this isn't stuck together, so don't be <laughs> alarmed. I'm just going to, actually, I've got another cake on the other side, but I'll tell you about that later. So I'm going to take this off and move this out the way. Okay. Okay, so we don't need those ones. Right, so I have my um, freshly iced tear. We did this last night. Sorry, this um, this one uh, is covered with, it's Master Tropic, coloured with um, Pro Gel Navy. So uh, uh, you just keep adding the navy until it gets this really deep colour if you want to try and achieve this. Um, so it's freshly covered, which is good. However, when you cover a cake, you don't want to stencil the same day that you cover the cake. Um, when you wrap round your stencil, you can sometimes make dents in it, so if you do, you can go ahead and try and buff it out. However, the best thing to do is to wait a whole 24 hours so that it's got a little bit of a hardness to the finish, and then we can go ahead and stencil with minimum damage. Okay, so I've got my stencil ready. So, the stencil comes with two squares here. Now, this is where we can insert this monogram. So. I'm very romantic, I've chosen my name and my husband's name. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> He's going to, he won't even be caring, you know. But anyway, um, so these are blank, and you can get a blank in sheet as well. So if you don't want to have the monogram, it's absolutely fine. You just put the blank squares in there, and you wouldn't obviously go over the and. You would just put mask and tape over the top of this. So if I turn it round to the back end, I'll show you here. You can see that I've actually, there's a little gap that goes all the way around that monogram, so you have to close that off with your sticky tape. Now, I've found that in the UK, our masking tape's not quite as good as um, the masking tape that our lovely American uh, friends have. So, in this case, I've used washi tape. Now, washi tape's that really fancy stuff, like, um, that you stick on paper and cards, and you can get them out a lot of craft shops. Really, really tacky and they work amazing for these stencils. And what's that called? Washi tape. Washi tape. So it's like, Have you heard of it? It's beautiful. You would have. So you it. can do all your nice stationery <laughs> with this. Um, so that's been trimmed up just so that it doesn't go anywhere else other than where we want it. And where would they get that from? Like hobby crafts? I right? just um, any of the craft stores. Mm -hmm. So you can see that when I wrap that round the tear, it's a really, really good fit height wise. So you have to make sure that when you're doing your cake that the stencil is actually going to fit in it. So you have to take into account when you're layering up your cake, you've got your filling, so you need to add on an extra centimetre or two per tier so that you can try and roughly work out where you're going to end up once you've got when you're using real cake. So okay, so one of the other stencils that I'm going to show you, it's quite a long one and I cut slits into the side of it. So don't shout at me Robin, it's what I do with all my stencils. But for this one, we are going to just stick it to the cake um, because we're going to wrap uh, tulle. I can never say that word and it's my Scottish accent. Tulle. T-U-L-L-E. -L -E. um, and basically it's a little bit of mesh and you wrap that round and you'll scrape it and it's so that some of these wee flappy bits don't lift up and um, the ice and get stuck underneath. It's to try and give us a really clean um, stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this on. This is obviously a dummy cake. This is probably not edible glue, which uh, when I say probably, it's not edible glue, but it's not going to be a problem. Okay, we're only going to stick down a stencil, okay? I don't want to start attacking this stencil with a craft knife, um, but I'll show you how I've done that anyway for some other ones. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the washi tape. I'm actually going to stick two bits on each side. You could use pins, but you'd have to sterilise them first if this was a real cake. Um, and what else I do? So I cut in the slits and I use stencil grabber, which is essentially like bandage. I'm going to show you that in a bit. Um, however, I'm actually loving the washi tape, so I am now converted. <laughs> okay, so a couple there, and then basically, I'm going to stick that around the cake. And because it's a dummy, it doesn't matter. It's going to stick on really nice. 
but I, and I don't want this to move in any form. But by the time I wrap the tulle around it, it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just going to grab the tulle and I decided to pick tulle that matched yes. Carol's <laughs> colours. We love pinky. I do love pinky. So where would they get that from? Hobby craft. Hobby craft, well? yep. Yeah. Or any um, stationery stores? I've never just, heard of that before. I quite like it just to buy it. The tool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like for a little lunch. Buy it on a, for yeah. a little kids. It's for kids. little what? You can make tutus out of it. I've never made a tutu in my life. I'll show you one next week. I'm doing one too. <laughs> <laughs> now because this I've got one, twin daughters and they never got a tutu. They never got a tutu. <laughs> Oh, you'll have to make up for it now. <laughs> you have to make sure this is going to wrap around the back and I'm going to gather it and I'm going to use bulldog clips to stick it. But obviously it's not at all enough so I'm going to wrap another section round. And this is like a couple of pounds for like a lot of metres so it's, it's easily disposable. So don't try and wash it and reuse it, please. <laughs> yeah. no no need, so let me just grab my bulldog clips. By the time you've slapped all... Um, uh, or lice and all over it, they won't want it anyhow, will they? Exactly. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to pull this really tight at the back here. Oops. And what does this do? So this is going to hold any little bits of stencil that could potentially lift up for the icing to go underneath. Ah, I see, and it right. stops it, um, and it, it, it just, aye, it gives you a really nice crisp finish for right. your Stencil. And I'm going to show you, um, I've done a tear over here, the back of it is a dog's dinner, and the front of it is perfect because I used the tool. Right. Um, so, so you're going to show them what can yeah, happen Yeah, definitely. Can so you I've just got, turn that around so we're going to see how tight it is Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all right? So that's at the back. Yeah. So I've tightened it as much as I can. This isn't moving, that's not moving either. So now, I am right handy, so I'm going to be focusing on this section. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, and one, a top tip. If you are like me and you like to put your hands on things, you need to put a plastic uh, acrylic disc or something on there. Um, like this one. Hang on, let me just borrow that. So just an acrylic disc that's going to fit on top, only so that I can put my thumb on there and hold the stencil and not dent or start to melt the ice and if I've got sweaty hands, <laughs> which... I never have because I'm always freezing. No, but there's people with hot hands. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you've got hot hands, yeah. put on a pair of gloves. Or and to be fair, I, I've done that before. I've gone and done a nice cake and put my finger and thumb through the top. I know, but it can help. It just it's just indents it. I know. Yeah. It's the leaning and it doesn't on matter it. how much you try and buff it out. It doesn't buff out really. Well, that's, this is why we use these. You can yeah. put something on there. It doesn't have to be this. If you've got those um, acetate smoothers, is it? Who have you got? Barinas. Barinas. You can put one of them on top, yeah. so you can put your thumb on there. And obviously I'm right handed, so I'm using my left hand to hold this in position. So I can start to scrape it in and draw it. So what I do is, for to get a nice clean stencil, is I work two to three inches at a time. Scrape that down and then move on to the next bit, two to three inches, another bit, and work my way around. And I'll scrape in between and I'll keep cleaning my smoother, okay? So I've got my ice and I'm going to have to place it here just so I don't get in your way. Okay, I'm going to try and lean over so you just can see and I can see what I'm doing. It's okay, that's, Is that that's right? fine. Yeah, that's exactly fine. Right, okay, so I'm going to basically just smudge that in. Take a nice big bit. Remember and breathe as well, because that's important. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always hold my breath. Because you feel it's all holding your breath. <laughs> I am, I'm still holding my breath. Okay, so just smudge it in. Um, obviously I can't see around the corner so I'm hoping that I've got all that bit of the stencil done. Okay, I'll be careful here because I know I've got the two layers. Just going to put a little bit more on over there. I'll get around this um, monogram and then I'll start to scrape, okay? So, I've got my little handy scraper that comes in your stencil pack. Right, so now I'm going to actually lean on the top of this and hold this nice and tight. And I'm holding the chill as well, and I'm going to scrape heavy, okay? Because you don't want any thick bits or thin bits. Everything's got to be sort of the same consistency and thickness. So when you start your stenciling, you don't want to go and have a coffee break in between. You have to just keep going. It's like once you start, don't stop, just... Breathe and move on. Okay, so that's nice and clean. So I'm now going to do this last section here. So 
if you've ever got any stencils that have any of these wee flappy bits, the tool will be your friend. And also, just to say, I'm not perfect. This might not work well. We'll soon see as soon as I take it off. We've done everything we possibly can to make sure it's going to be okay. However, sometimes it just is not. And if it's not, then I'll tell you how I'll fix it. And that's what we like to know. Exactly. When we walk up. My students always love it when things go wrong with me. Right, let's have a look. I think that looks okay, right? So now, oh, I'm going to go back and just fill in these tiny little bits here. So I've missed a little section there. This is the time to do it. You don't want to move on until you've got all the bits done. Nice firm scrape. Okay, so normally you don't want to go back over what you've scraped because that's when you can um, gouge out what you've actually done. So I'm going to just gently take this off. Okay, and then unravel it. So if you've got um, royal icing on your fingers, make sure that you don't touch your nice blue cake. So this is just going to ping off. Just allow it to come away without dragging on your cake. And how's that looking, girls? Amazing. Oh, that looks that stunning. Look good? Absolutely um, stunning. So you can see here, I've actually smudged that a little bit. Right? Yeah. So that was my fault because I've just smudged it underneath. But what I'll try and do is get that off before it sets. So I'm just going to try and scrape it. It would always be better if I actually had a clean finger. <laughs> okay. I've now picked up a label of some sort. So I'll try and I'll let that set a little bit and we'll see how it's going to look. But that's probably one of the worst things that you can have happen if you're a stencil smudge. So you have to be really confident when you're doing this. These are the, probably the better stencils to start with if you're new to stenciling at all. I would get familiar with acrylic stencils rather than going to the mesh stencils first. However, when you're well versed, then by all means, you can advance on either your, your mesh stencils. So I'm going to let that set. And then I'll maybe do something else in the back of it, but I've got a couple more like tears to do from some other stencils. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I'll put this to the side and we will get set up for your next one. Fantastic. Super, no worries. I'm like, wait. Can I just give everybody a full view of that? If you can just, yeah, if you can just turn it round, that's fine. Not too close. Just yeah. pull it back a bit. Yeah, that's it. It's just so everyone can see the full pattern. It's really pretty. Yeah. Right, so that's that one. Right, so one of the other ones I'd like to do is, it's called the border. Right, so let me just grab that one. So someone's just asked a quick question. Can this be done onto buttercream? Um, I have never stenciled on buttercream. I know that you can do it. Um, one of the things that you can do tonight is you can ask to join the Evil Cake Genius Minions group. It's a stencil group. Lots of hints and tips in there. And I did see a lady post up a buttercream stencil cake. So it's a great place to go and ask some questions. Personally, I've never tried it. I'm actually scared to try that <laughs> um, out of all the cakes. But I'm not really a buttercream girl, so um, I like it in the cake, not necessarily on the outside of the cake. I much prefer working with fondant because I know where I am. Um, so that's the best place to ask. If Robin's around, you can answer that one. Well, I think they should be around. They are. They did say that they were watching tonight, but right. as I said, it's their daytime in there now, isn't it? And we've got someone asking, what's the dis difference between the mesh and the acrylic stencils? Oh, the mesh, okay. That's a very good question. If you I've think learned about, that myself tonight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you think about mesh, it's like a screen print. So when you're at school and you just do those screen prints, it's a very, very flexible material. The image, I, I don't know how they do it because I'm not privy to that information, but the pattern gets embedded into the mesh. Um, and there's a white part of the stencil, another part's blue, the ones that we get from Evil Cake Genius. The white section is where the icing will go through. In the sense that when the royal icing goes onto a cake, it's actually only staying in the surface. It's not really having this nice thick royal icing effect. It's, just, it's completely a different look altogether. If I grab this other tier over here, on the back of it, I actually did a mesh stencil so I can show you the difference. Okay, 
Okay, so this is another one of our range, um, and this is the crystalline stencil. So see how the lines are super fine and really, really sharp and clean. You can achieve that with mesh, but not only that, you can go for really, really fine detail. If you think about Wedgwood, um, do you know how the really, really faint patterns? Oh. They, they work so well with mesh. It's beautiful. So Don't go away with that cake yet. Turn it round. Oh, sorry. Oh, Show so you those want to amazing see flowers. So is this what they learn on your online course? Oh, yeah, on the night school. So if you decide you want to join Susanna's night school classes, okay, it is a paid tutorial, but if you want to join her classes, these are the most beautiful flowers that she will show you how to make. So you do have to do a little bit of investment, but if you want the best, then you need to invest. <laughs> That's so. Isn't that right? Yeah. 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 I oh, got, the best. <laughs> I've got this border stencil, this is the Art Deco one. So I am going to show you how I stenciled this, but I'm also going to make it gold. Now you can't um, colour up royal ice in gold, it, you, it'll go like a kind of muddy, horrible beige colour if you put gold into royal icing. However, what we're going to do is we're going to stencil this and we're going to scrape it down and then we're going to airbrush straight away. So a couple of things. In order to make it as smooth as possible is to have everything ready. So I'll get rid of this tier, I'll get another tier over, we're going to get it wrapped around. I'm also going to mask off the section where I don't want any gold to go because the airbrushes, you know, they can, they can land everywhere. Um, we're going to make sure the airbrush is ready uh, and it's filled with our gold and I'll talk to you about that. Carol's got it on her wish list so if you're wanting to buy it, you may. And I'll chat to you about an edible versus edible as well. Just to keep you safe, right? That's okay. great because we've got questions flying in already. <laughs> yeah. right. What's the difference of a gold edible and non edible? Can you airbrush? I what can you ask those questions? Be? To be fair, I asked her those questions because when she told me she was bringing them, I said, Oh, I don't sell anything that's non edible. And she said, No, but you do need these, and she'll explain them in a minute. So, just a few things that I do need to tell you you voted and we have been nominated for the best retailer of the year award there's four of us up for nominations and of course you know we're top of the queue so best retailer of the year sugar and crumbs nomination number one uh second is evil cake genius okay <laughs> <laughs> Cake Stuff and The Cake Decorating Company. All great companies, but thank you for voting for us. It's been an absolute privilege. So all we've got to do now is make sure that we get to the Cake Masters Awards and we win. Um, those guys, have you, thank you so much on the group. You posted some marvellous comments on there. And if you would go and put those same comments on our page, because on the group, it's a closed group. But if you go and find my post on the page, um, in fact, I'll go and pin it to the top and pop the same comments on there. So everybody can see what you think because those comments were great even if you have to copy and paste your own comment go and put it on there that would be fantastic so and then just before Suzanne starts again as well I'm going to get this out of the way and um, last week we did the draw and uh, we picked a lady who unfortunately didn't qualify for the draw now she did know that and she did put that in her comment but because Laura was rushing last week she didn't read she didn't read it because she was just putting everybody's names in the draw so uh, we did send that lady a consolation prize and she was very pleased and we sent her a little bit more than what she was expecting so we then redid the draw on Thursday and the winner of that draw was a lady called Jane Brown was it yep. Jane Brown has she been in touch with us I can't find that she has right okay so Jane Brown I have seen you vented again this week so please anybody who knows Jane Brown because we can't find her on Facebook but if you can mess it I think that you know what if you're there and I'll try and find you afterwards while the live's going on so um, we do a competition every week and it's following the Great British Bake Off and it's called the Sugar and Crumbs um, British Bake Off 2018 and all that we ask you to do is watch tomorrow's um, uh, Great British Bake Off so this is going to be for next week which is week six watch it there's three uh, sections there's technical there's signature and there's what's the next one technical <laughs> signature Technical. Showstopper. Showstopper. Well done, you're paying attention now, Laura. I was trying to think. 
<laughs> so drink. if you make one of them, okay, you get one ticket in the draw. If you make two, two tickets in the draw. And if you make three, three tickets in the draw. What we do is we try to be fair. So rather than, you know, like somebody amazing coming on, making the best things every week and then winning every week, you know what, we try and have a little bit more fun about it and give everybody the opportunity of winning. So basically everybody who enters, their ticket goes in here and, um, and then Monday night's guest picks. So all the tickets from last week, which was Spice Week, are in here. So there you go, Ooh, Susanna, you can pick the lucky winner. I have to read my writing today. <laughs> okay, Elaine Lawton. Oh, Elaine Lawton. Can you bring it up just to show <laughs> everyone? Yeah. Elaine right? Lawton, well done. You're the winner this week. What did she win? Oh, a £25 voucher this Number week. Number 257. Oh, no, take no notice of the numbers. So, Elaine, you're the winner. Oh, that's good well then, isn't done, it? Elaine. Well done, Elaine. We know Elaine. I'm going to see Elaine's her this weekend. Elaine's watching. Yeah, well, she was watching earlier, so well done. So, um, you've won a £25 voucher this week. Anyhow, so are you ready for the next yeah, part? Yeah, Great, right. Super. So, this is the stencil that I'm demoing now. This is the Art Deco one. I've actually not washed it very well, so I've still got a bit of gold on the back. But I'm going to place that there so you yeah, can see it. That's fine. This is really nice. I'll quickly bring over the cake so you can see it in its entirety. Okay, so this is how it looks on the cake. So we've got this beautiful, clean royal icing and that's the effect that we're, we're going to go for you really really need to use chill if you are going to be doing um the gold airbrushing on this because it'll never look quite as clean if you don't now i'm going to show you it not looking quite as clean now nobody usually sees the back ends of these cakes so these cakes have took a little bit of a battering over the coming weeks but they'll be all tarted up really nice for cake international <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to turn this around so that when I first started using the stencil, I just went straight on and I airbrushed it and then I realised it wasn't as clean as what I wanted. You can see that it's not quite perfect. So we're going to go and use a tool and we're not going to have that. Instead, we are going to have this really clean looking gold. Okay, so let me just move this out of the way. So I, I did mention that we are going to be using some different golds. Now obviously, if you're going to be serving this cake to a customer, a friend, your family, you cannot put anything inedible on that cake at all. The only way you could get around that if you use a dummy tear, because it, although it's non-toxic, it is non-edible. You just have to be a wee bit sensible about what you're going to use. So if something says non-toxic, don't get confused, it's just non-edible. That really shouldn't go into a cake that's going to get served. Um, if it's for family and you want to cut off that icing, then by all means, like, you can make that judgement call. But just to be safe, you would not pat that out to anybody else. The way I get around it, if I was going to have to be doing a really tall tear and the bride wants something really shiny and gold, then I'll incorporate a fake polystyrene tear in there. It's the easiest way. It has a little bit of height and it means that then I'm not going to poison my customer, potentially. So, when you saw that last cake there, there was some gold leaf in the base. Again, I use edible gold leaf if I'm doing it for a customer. However, because that's a dummy, I actually use imitation gold. And that's quite, it's a, it's a cheaper alternative to using real gold to see what the effect looks like without spending all of your money on a display cake. So that's just to let you know that you can use fake tears for the, um, what do you call that, the imitation gold, and you can use a fake tear for the edible gold spray. Now the one, and that's a great got. idea, that, because you know what, I never thought about that. I was just thinking, I need you to keep looking at the camera instead of me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry. So, I, we do it all the time. Like <laughs> you look at Laura's and Laura's talking at you. <laughs> but no, I never thought about that, because I was thinking, no, I don't want to sell anything that's non-edible. Mm -hmm. And um, it's great, because I never thought about the dummy cake. Mm. Did you, Laura? So long as it's not going to come into contact, yeah. then you're absolutely fine. Yeah. And it's just, it, think of it as a bonus, because you can add an extra fake tear that's going to boost the height of something and make it a little bit more grander than what your customers might be going to expect. So, but you also ju just use your common sense, make sure everything's safe, everything's food grade, if you're going to be using it on a real cake. Okay, so I'll just grab this tear. So this is the one we are going to stencil. Um, obviously, if we use the border stencil, 
You can see that it's not quite reaching the top, which is fine, but we have to mask off this section at the top here if we're going to airbrush because it's not going to um, cover the cake very well. Okay, so I'm just going to basically use the washi tape to stick this around. So let me see where that stencil goes. That's fine. Get some washi tape. Again, if you want to use pins, make sure you sterilise them. And all that means is pop your pins in boiling water for five minutes. Okay, so I just want to make sure I've got this just above the pattern. So I need to go a little bit higher. Okay, that's fine. Stick that there. And when it's a dummy tear, you will chase it around the table. So <laughs> don't be worried. When it's a real cake, it won't move quite so easily. Oh, don't you move. Once I've got the chill round, it'll stay in place, okay? So I'm going to stick this one down as well. So normally the stencils won't go around the full cake. They will take maybe two or three goes at stenciling to make sure that you get your full pattern. You'll have to dry in between. So the cake that I previously stenciled, it would be really ready to use now if I wanted to do a repeat pattern. You need to leave it five minutes in order for it to dry the way you want it, okay? So I'm just going to... Stick that down. Now I can do this because it's a dummy cake. However, if it was a real cake, I'd probably use my pins or you can see the slits that I've cut in there. That's basically where I would be um, putting my stretchy tape, which I'll show you in a second, because I've got another one to do. Right, I'm going to put my chill round. Cut that down, sorry scissors. Really nice and tight. You're always a little bit of fingers and thumbs to get that first clip done. And the same with the top section here. You just want it pulled topped. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Okay, so there's no wiggle on the stencil. The chill's holding it in place and the parchment's not going anywhere either. Now, because I am right-handed, I'm going to start from this side. If you're left-handed, you'll start another side, two to three inches at a go. Um, I'm just going to look for my little card that I used earlier and give it a clean because you don't want any dried royal icing anywhere. Okay. So normally I've got loads of these, but um, obviously I've only come down with one. Right. So again, place your acrylic disc on top just so that I can bend my fingers around and I'm going to just... Start at the base and just work that in. Do you want a turntable? Oh no, this is fine. I'll use I'll use a turntable in a minute because I just remembered I've got to spray it with gold. <laughs> See? Thanks for thinking, Carol. <laughs> See, Carol's keeping it out. Okay, so the same, because this is only a wee border, I can probably put on a little bit more than what I would usually do, which is about four to five inches worth. Okay, and then I'm going to scrape that down. Right, so normally I'll be working on a board so that I don't get any over the table, okay, because you don't want to run your cake into it. Scrape that nice and firm. Okay, let me just pop that in there, sorry. Nice and firm. Okay, and then I'm aware that I've got royal icing on the table, just scrape that off. Just hold on a minute, Suzanne. Uh -huh. Because we're buffering and freezing. Right, okay. So everyone, we do know that we're buffering and freezing. We're not quite sure. So I'm, I'm just, just going to stop Suzanne. I'm going to get Suzanne to fasten this up. I suppose you have to keep going with the yeah. first layer. <laughs> I know. Right, keep going with the first layer. Yeah, you can't really. <laughs> it's one of those ones you need <laughs> to just keep going. Once you've started, you've uh -huh. got to finish. I'll just scrape that in. I'm hoping we don't have to go for take four. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Right, so yeah. mine's freezing too. Straight. Just stay calm. We know it's freezing. Just stay calm, everybody. Let's just see if it sorts itself out. If not, it's time for a cup of tea while we get set up again. And I, do you know what? In the history of um, Facebook Lives, we have never done this four times. So I am beginning to think that Suzanne is a jinx. She <laughs> said she is. I'll not be allowed back. <laughs> so just bear with me. Right, so um, my... 
stencils a little bit loose at one side so I might have a wee bit of a problem but we'll, we'll soon see it. I have to keep going because yeah. whilst um, that stencil's on there and the royal icing's sitting on it, it's drying. Yeah. And if you leave that royal icing on your cake without taking the stencil off, all you do is pull your handiwork straight back off again so it's pointless letting it dry with the stencil attached so you have to keep going. It's one of those things, once you start, don't stop. Okay, and I'm just going to, um, what I'll do is, while we're waiting, because that's my stencil there, I'm not taking off the tool at the minute, I'm going to go and grab my airbrush, yeah. and I'm going to basically just get that sorted, yeah. so hopefully by the time we come back. So what we're going to do now is, Suzanne's had to finish this with the um, royal icing, because she can't stop to see if we have to wait, set up again. I think we are going to have to set up again, okay? So what I'm going to say now is all of you go and have a cup of tea and a wee, or a cup of coffee, <laughs> whatever it is you want to do, and then we are going to be set up again um, in about five, six minutes, hopefully, yeah? So go and get a cup of tea, guys. Come back again, five or six minutes. There's 253 of you there watching. I want to see 253 of you back again in five or six minutes. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Right, we're back, part four. <laughs> well, part three for YouTubers. We're gonna stick it all together, so don't worry. So you guys who've already been watching us tonight, we've had a massive audience, as per usual on a Monday, which is great. Um, so Suzanne had to finish this bit. So um, because it because of the royal icing and it's setting and going hard, unfortunately we couldn't stop for the live. So she actually had to finish this bit to, and then she also had to um, airbrush it and then she had to take it all off. And, and it was a bit of a learning thing because I was like, oh right, could you not just wait? And if she did wait, it would set hard and she would end up making a mess of it, ripping it off the cake. But thankfully, we've got a bit more to do. And these stencils work, so you just slip it in there. All matches up really mm -hmm. nice and tight. That's yeah, clever. Aren't you clever, you? <laughs> that, that was your one, not me. <laughs> so you are going to get to see it because she's going to do this bit for you. So um, so while you were all but coming back, I hope you all enjoyed your cup of tea and we're going to get on as fast as we can. Yeah? Hi, thank you for persevering. So, as you can see here, it does work out quite well, which is good exactly what we're looking for that nice clean separation between each of the um, the designs on the stencil it's clean work which is ideal for what you want now as carol said if i had went ahead and just let the royal license set on this when you go and take the stencil off you will rip some of your royal stencil image off too and it can look really dodgy and patchy so it's not the best idea i have done it in the past when i was learning how to do stenciling um, so the best thing to do is you have to work while the Royal Icing is not fully set and it's still got a bit of moisture to it. I went ahead and I airbrushed straight away. So I'm using the non-edible stuff from Claire Bowman. Um, it's some stuff that um, Carol's got in her shop. So you should be able to put that in your basket if you want it. Uh, bear in mind it is non-edible, so for fake tears only. Great for practicing as well. And it gives you that little bit of a, a boost of colour. Okay, so as Carol said, this is a continuous design. This was the brain work of Robin, so thanks Robin. We can place the stencil in here and repeat the pattern. Now, not all stencils will match up around the cake. Um, they're not all being produced with pi in mine, 3.14. Um, multiply your, your tear by that. But no, sometimes there's gonna be a section that doesn't overlap quite as nice. So you have to make a judgment call. Have a look. See what side is your prettiest side and that's the side that you're going to match up because there is always a back to a cake so there's also a side to a cake, a front to a cake we're going to choose the best looking part for the front obviously um, but we want to match this up as best we can so the first thing I do is just make sure that I've got it in the right orientation which is good so we'll just wait till Maria comes back and I'll show you that <laughs> so this is a good lesson to learn as well I had to go ahead and stencil it and airbrush it and I have to wait in between before I can redo the next section. This has to dry fully so I'm just going to give it a wee push and I know that my royal ice is set. We don't want to wrap around a stencil and have your image all kind of um, disturbed so you have to make sure that the royal ice has set before you move on. So I'm just going to show you there how that lines up. So you want to try and get it round so that it's at the same distance from the stencil below. So we know that we're going to have that continuous pattern. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is go ahead again 
I've got a little bit of gold here, that's because I was trying to get it off as quick as I could. Anyhow, I'd probably scrape that off. So I need to go ahead and mask it off again. So I've got that bit of parchment I had earlier. So make sure it's going to run up here. Oh, it's down that way. So it's like a little headdress. A wee headband for your, your cake. Okay, then get your stencil. Match up as best you can just now. Now the beauty of this one is sitting flush to the table. However, if you say you're using the double barrel tier and your cake's smaller and you wanted the top end of the design, you'd have to elevate your cake or turn your cake upside down so that you get the right part of the stencil that you're looking for. But this one started off right at the base, so we don't need to worry about anything like that. Just wrap that around. And this is where you have to learn to do things yourself because sometimes nobody else is going to be in the room with you. So you have to learn to get your stencils on by yourself. So I will, I need to stick this down. So a positive comments, the audience is growing nicely again. Thank you everyone for coming back and joining us. And I'm so glad that you are sticking with Suzanne. Do remember Suzanne's traveled, done a four hour trip down here today. She's come all the way down from just for, for near Glasgow. She's here doing this, um, doing this work for you. This is premium stuff, okay? So this is proper artistic skills made easy. So as easy as you can, anyhow. So this is going to give great effects on your wedding cakes. Do give them a go. The stencils are for sale. Um, everything that she's showing you, some things she's had to carry on with when we broke up in the lives simply because of drying times. Um, everything dries quickly and if she'd waited, we would have ended up ripping it off the cake. So, um, Thank you for joining us. Stick with us. All the positive support. So I've just read a couple of comments. Cat, um, Cat Riley, her little boy's just come downstairs. Caught the caught you the beginning of us starting again, and said it's awesome. Aww, thank you. <laughs> okay, we've got quite a few of your own followers here as well tonight. So thank you guys for coming over to our page and joining <laughs> us, <laughs> which is really very good. Lots of positive positive going on so good on. i'm glad right by magic this pattern's lining up okay so you can see here it's perfect there but when i turn it around to the other side oh my goodness this never ever happens so um robin's designed it with pie in mind i think because it's going to perfectly match up well we'll see when i've done it okay so i i'm going to start on this right hand side again just because i'm right handed now I'm going to be airbrushing, so something on the top to stop any of that pesky dust getting anywhere. I'm a trusty acrylic dust so that I can hold it, okay? So I'll just get my icing out. Now see if you were doing um, the gold, you can actually colour this up yellow and you'll get a much brighter gold. I completely forgot, I've got the yellow on the table and just forgot, so I am human. So just to give you confidence, Suzanne, go ahead, carry on. All right. <laughs> right carry on. Um, everyone's saying you're doing a great job. Oh, Pam, Pam, Pam Hallam Wend Wendley, um, doing a great job. Shona McCree, um, oh, yeah. go Suzanne. Aww. Trisha Torrance, what is Suzanne's page? So the page is Suzanne Esper Cake School. Yep, that's right. Suzanne Esper Online Tutorials, is it? Um, so basically, if you go on to Suzanne Esper Cake School, you'll see an advert for my flower school, which is an online Very night cool. school. And we convene every Wednesday night on a live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am about to go over what I've actually already stenciled. So I'm just going to be a bit careful, even though I know that I'm going to, it's lining up and I can airbrush over the top. I don't necessarily want to make a bum of it. I was going to say something else, but we're live. And I'm trying not to swear. No worries. Okay. We're well over 200 again. <laughs> so Everyone, I'm going to start scraping. So we're well over 200 again. So everybody's coming back. We've not oh, lost good. too many of you. So I know it's going to finish late this live tonight So because of the delays. But do stick with us. We're here. We're committed to you guys. And all you've got to do is stay nice and cosy in front of in your front lounge there watching us. <laughs> so it just... <laughs> Before I take this off, I'm going to go and airbrush it now, right? So I had to get that airbrush ready when we were off screen. So I've just got a little PME one. I'm waiting for my dinky doodle one to arrive, like you <laughs> guys. Um, so please hurry up. But no, that's it. PME is fine. It's like it's good. Yeah. We just need a, a nail brush. That's all right. So I've got the inedible stuff in here. I haven't filled it up, so I might need to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and start filling in where the stencil is. Okay, and I'm being fast because I'm well aware 
that that royal icing is going to be drying underneath there. Okay, so this is where you don't go and make a cup of tea, you don't talk to anybody, you don't answer a message on Facebook, because I get distracted too. Turn that off. Right, so now, I'm just going to turn this around so Maria can see me. I'm just going to take this off, bring this down to the front, and just unravel, take that off first, and then I will undo this. Oh, do you see that? Look at the, how that pings off. Right, okay, and then move this off. I've got a little bit of royal icing here, Absolutely which fantastic. I didn't want, but I'll be able to fix that up. So just the whole purpose of this is take your time. You're not going to be doing this in a live situation when you're at home. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure you've got everything <laughs> ready to rock. Not under pressure like no, you are. You don't have to do it to so <laughs> other people. You can actually just, you know, and when I say you need to be fast, you can actually take your time with it, but just don't let that royal icing dry in the stencil because that's where the problems occur. But if I'd taken my time, I probably wouldn't have got it smudged underneath. Um, so anyway, I, I think it looks absolutely perfect. Um, do you know what, sometimes there are little blemishes from a distance, does it matter? No. As if you make a right, I was going to say something else here, of it, <laughs> <laughs> then you would maybe have to consider recovering your tear. But in all the cakes I've ever done, I've never had to strip a cake for that reason. So. Um, I'm sure you won't either. Have a practice, have a play. Okay, so that's that one done. Um, so at least now we shouldn't have any gold on the top, which we don't, so that's perfect. I'm going to move this off to the side. And I'm going to bring back that tear that we did the Alexandra Lace on, and I'm going to show you how to embellish it with a few of the products in St. Carol's shop. So I'll just move this away. So guys, if you want to buy any of the stencils, um, that we've got we've got six or seven of them, I think, available on the site tonight. Um, do make sure you buy them quickly because I know that they're going to sell out very, very fast. Right, okay, I'm just getting myself organised here. Okay, so I want to talk to you about some of the embellishments. If, if Laura, you could show this again. Yeah. Um, um, no. Just something. <laughs> Is that all right? Sorry. I can't. <laughs> Right, so yep. basically, this has got some edible sequins on there. I actually made that using cake lace. So I've got the mat, I'll show you what that is. Carol's got it in her shop. Um, and I actually use pre-made cake lace, which was a pair of lesson. I've got the tub somewhere, I'll show you. And then I went ahead and I added little blossom cutters. So I'm going to show you how I made those. Um, and I've got some already pre-dried because you have to dry them in do you know how the dimple foam to get the, the round shape. So I'm going to show how to do all of this basically. So let me just grab my bits and pieces and I'll meet you back there in a sec. Right, okay, so I have, I don't know if this camera will pick that yeah. up. Okay, so I've got little um, pre-made blossoms and the pre-made sequins. And the pre-made sequins we used, it's the cake lace one, um, soft silver. So this is already pre-mixed. Um, you would get, do you know how you get your cake lace knife? You put it into the mat, which I've got here. So this is the sequins one. To be fair, I actually just use the small size of the sequins, so the top end of the mat. Um, I just felt that the larger sequins were just that wee bit too big for the job that I wanted. However, you might find a use for them. I just really like the small stuff. So I went ahead, spread that in, and I actually baked it in my oven about 50 degrees for about 10 minutes. Um, and then I took it out, refilled it again, backfilled it again with the, um, the pre-made stuff, let it dry again, popped it out and that's what I have here. So it's just little pre-made um, sequins. Okay, so and they're not going to go off. You can make them in advance and store them. Okay, so I'm going to be putting them on here. But the first thing I've got to do is I need to water down some of my royal icing so that I can go ahead to pipe round some of these wee detailer bits, which I did in the first cake. Okay, no just... worries, so a couple of more comments here. So you go and do whatever it is that yeah, you okay. want that down, that's fine. So Doreen Griffin, she refuses to give up, she's staying with us. Good girl yes. Doreen, that's what we like. Jackie Richards says it looks absolutely perfect. Lindsay McIver says you're doing well. Amelia James, fab job. Gillian, we're all very grateful for you doing that, popping down today. It's great. Oh, so everyone's really you. pleased. Loads of positive res uh, responses here. That's cool. So go on then, show us what you're doing. Right, okay, so these are 
Um, the, these are the Blossom, well, let me just remind myself their name because I've got these in the house. <laughs> Blossom Cutters, they're fantastic. Yeah. Carol's got them in her shop. This is a, a set, is this the whole set? That one's the whole set. We sell them singly and then we sell them as a full set as well. So, they're so all I've used a lot of the smaller size ones just because I wanted to get this more delicate ones onto this. It was to emulate the bride's dress. She had sequins on there, little floral details. So I've used the little um, tiny primrose cutters, um, some of the pointy ones. So that's what I've already got pre-dried. You would use flour paste. Now you need to warm up your flour paste, roll it out to really fine, cut out your flowers. You don't need to do too much to them, just dry them in the, the dimple foam that you get to normally dry your flowers. Carol, I don't know if you've got any a dimple foam. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, so sorry. we'll show you that. I didn't know what bit. it was, dimple foam. I'm thinking, <laughs> so right. You can buy it from Amazon or from Carol's shop. Um, so basically, that's how I dry those flowers. So they've been pre dried. They do break, so when you're going to be putting them onto your cake, they might break. So always make tons, right? And so, then store them. Right, a couple of questions while you're carrying on there yeah. then. Um, yes, Sam Boone, it was tulle that was wrapped over the stencil. And then somebody's just asked, instead of putting the royal icing on, could they airbrush yes, straight on? Yes, you can. However, you're not going to get a clean effect. It goes kind of fuzzy at the edges, so you don't get that crisp lined look. However, if that's if you're happy with that kind of airbrush look, do you know how when you see the spray paint on the walls and it's got the fuzzy edges, that's what you're going to get if you just directly airbrush. Sometimes you are tempted to go really close to the cake to try and get it more neater. Um, because it's got liquid, it sometimes runs under the back end of your stencil, so you can get in a wee bit of trouble with that. So I suggest not to do that. But that's, you have a play, see what you think. Okay? So the colour, the fondant was white and she's covered, coloured it navy with the Pro Gel colours. So we do stock that. Anybody who wants to buy anything tonight, okay, we do have a wish list. So go to over to sugarandcrumbs.co.uk. There is a Facebook wish list at the top. So where you see home, shop, brands, carry along. And then you'll see that there's the current month, which is this month. And then there's all the previous months. If you go into there, everything that Suzanne's used tonight is in there. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I've got, remember the royal icing we used to stencil this? That's a little bit stiffer. You wouldn't be able to pipe with that. So I have the bowl here. And I've got, I'm going to show you how I, um, so it loosen up the royal ice and you don't want it that it's just running out the bag. So in order to do that, um, what I do is I take some royal ice and so get the back can end. Oh yeah, I can move that over. Is that okay? See, I'm useless at this. Not at all. <laughs> Knowing what camera. Right, okay, so for here that's, that's great. Right, right, so take the back end of your spatula, get some royal ice on there, okay? And rather than adding the water into my bowl, I actually dunk some of the royal ice into the water so that you're not actually pouring in too much because once the water's in there, it gets too sloppy, you've gone too far, far too quickly, then there's no point. So this way you can control the amount of water that you're adding. That's good, isn't it? I like that idea. Top tip, top tip. Yeah. Top right, okay, top. and then you're going to mix that through because the little bit that had the water will be the runniest portion, so you have to make sure that it's at a good consistency. Now, I really like actually using the meringue powder for making royal icing because it smells amazing. It doesn't smell like wet dog when you use egg white. <laughs> it's, <not what> <laughs> it smells like. ah, it's disgusting. Well, not with our icing sugars. It smells no, gorgeous. No, well, I'm it? sure it let them, uh, your icing sugars would cover up that smell completely. Mm. Um, well, I still have to try this, actually. Eh? I still have to try it. What does it taste like? I don't know. That's actually really nice. You say that as though you're surprised. No, I've, I have tried your sugars before, I promise. I just haven't tried this one, it's gorgeous. Goodness me. I love that. raspberry. Right, okay, so that's still too thick. When I lift up my spatula, it's pretty much sticking to it. So I'm just going to take some more water. Again, dunk that in, shake off the excess, bring that over and mix it through. We want it to, so that it comes off your spatula, but not running, running. It's called the 10 or 20 second. Um, royal icing. So while she's mixing that together, for those guys who are coming to cake and bake, um, I have got some sample tasters of cream cheese. So when you come to cake and bake, I've got three different sample tasters. So do make sure you ask the girls. Laura and Maria will be in charge.
they will be numbered A, B and C and basically I just want you to try them so that we can find out what the majority like and then whichever one the majority likes is the one that we'll be going to. So if you're at Cake and Bake this weekend, you'll be able to get a little taster of our cream cheese flavour and we'll be looking to see what the majority of people like. You can buy your aprons at the um, show as well and anybody who buys anything off our stand gets a free badge. Make sure you have a picture on the stand with your badge because we'll be doing a little prize. Right, so I think I'm going to test this out first because I might not be in the right area but I've got my little bit of ice in here that I'm going to test to see if I've got it to a nice consistency that's not going to be coming out all curly whirly. Um, okay, these are your disposable bags from um, the Queen of Hearts which Carol's got in her store. Okay, so what I like, what I like to do, I'm not sure where I'm looking at it now, I put my, because I'm right handed, I put my hand like that, pop the bag in, thumb up, wrap the base round and twist. And what that does is it creates the pressure here and it's allowing that royal icing to come out. Now the last thing you want to do is let the royal icing dry on the ends of your tip. So if you think you're going to be a little bit of while, you can get a damp cloth. So I'll just grab this one and I'll leave it here and I'll always leave the tip facing down into the damp cloth and that's going to stop it crusting. Because once that wee crust starts in there, it comes out all curly whirly and really, really difficult. So I'm going to check and see what the consistency is like first. Um, I'll, I'm just hiding. Hang on. So it's actually not too bad. It's quite thin, which is good. But a wee bit curly, but that's because I'm trying to pipe it in an odd angle. Um, so if I had my hand round the right do, way... Do whatever you need to do. I'd be fine. We okay. can manage. Maria can get over your shoulder. So yeah, that's that's. Maria can fine. get in places that you would never know she could get into. <laughs> right. She will climb all over you to get that right, no bother. Right. What we do for these one minute videos that Maria creates. <laughs> well done. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm going to pick a little bit of the design. And I'm going to start to pipe round it. So I've got my bag really nice and tight. And I am just going to overpipe. So, honestly, don't panic. You're not going to make a mess because the overall effect is really, really nice. Even though, when you look at it individually, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? But when you stand back and you have a look, it's absolutely perfect. All we're doing is creating this little 2D effect so the lace looks like it's jumping out, okay? So remember, again, you're breathing. If you don't <sighs> breathe, Oh, You're going to drop see, the oh. with royal icing in your hand. Don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of basically, just take your time. I should really thin this down a wee bit more because it is curling slightly. Don't persevere like me. You can basically use it like a pencil and just draw around. Especially when it's on the side of a cake. It's always tricky. But what you can do is you can often get those... Um, Cake turntables that are tilted, they're excellent for this job. So get yourself one of them if you're going to be persevering with this because you, you want to take your time. So where, where it's something like that, I'm going to push a little bit heavier bit there and just drag it down so it looks like a teardrop almost. And if you did want to make the royal ice some egg white, it's absolutely fine. And it works really, really well. Obviously that was the old school way. We've now got convenience from having pre-made royal icings available, powders, meringue. Right, so I, my royal icing's not coming out, which tells me it's clogged. So I'm just going to give it a wee squeeze on the table. Now what happens there is I didn't sift my royal icing when I should have. Okay, so lesson learned. What you can do is you can sift your icing and your meringue powder and you shouldn't get any wee lumps of bumps. Okay, so I'm just going to do another wee bit and then I'll start to embellish. So I'll just take this one here. Again, I'm still not breathing. <laughs> We're not breathing for you. I know, I'm not your sweating. <laughs> There's four of us in here not breathing now. Right, okay, so you would just take your time, make sure your royal license to a really good consistency. Then I'm going to take some of the little flowers, like these, nice and dry. I'm going to put a dab of royal icing on the back end and I'm going to place on these areas here and hold that in. 
just for a couple of seconds until it grips. Okay, and then what you can do as well, you can go back and put another little dot in there. And you can add, for instance, a silver ball, um, anything you want to just jazz that up a little bit more. Now when I put the sequins on, I had the sequins coming down these sections here. Okay, so again, I can use a smaller little flower. Let me just grab one out. I've got a wee tiny, tiny blossom, which is beautiful. So I dab in there because this one's so tiny. There we go. Just hold that there for a wee second or two. And again, go back and just put another wee dab in the middle there. It just finishes off your flower. Okay, and then again, some more here. Let's see where else we can put it. I like one down here. Always make spares because these wee things break. And this is just quick, easy ways that you can jazz it up. So now I want to put the sequins down this area here. So I'll just bring over the sequins. And I'm going to, like, I just want the smaller sequins first because I've got quite a lot of that large one. Because I can never decide what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Right, let me just see. Right, so there's a couple of these smaller sequins here. It'll be easier if I put it on the purple so you can see them. Okay so just dig it a couple more. We want a row of about five or six of these so you would make these in advance you wouldn't be doing it when you're trying to put it on your cake and we're going to use the royal icing a little dab there and we're going to start layering them up. Sorry I'm just struggling to catch that because it's low. Is oh, that I'm sorry. 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 I'm just, just because it's low on the table. Right, so what I'll do Sorry. is... Sorry. No, 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 is that okay up there? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, <laughs> so you can see I've layered up one already. Just another little dab of royal ice. And you can use edible glue if you've got some as well. Layer that up. So we're just going to make a little stack of sequins. And I know my hands are manky. This is where you would actually wash them. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I always like persevere. But you can get yourself some baby wipes. I think wipes. we all do that, don't we? I know. You do, and then you go, why didn't I just go and wash my hands? Yeah. Personally, I think um, the edible glue is better for doing this. Okay, and then I'm wanting to put that down that side there. So I'm going to put a little bit of royal glue on here, a royal icing here. Lift this up. It's, it is better if you use the edible glue. And definitely wash your hands because this is disgusting feeling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you would layer them just so that they're just coming down in a little angle there. So that's just one of the easy, quick ways that you can go ahead and embellish that. So what do you think? Oh, that looks fantastic. It's looking nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do it better than me. Just take your time with the royal ice and make sure it's coming out your piping bag really really well yeah but don't forget Suzanne you're doing this on the live I know and when I you're know. doing everything on the live you are under a lot of pressure and don't forget we've started this live four <laughs> times know, tonight I know. you know so we're doing we're doing it on the live everything's under pressure when you're at home you you set things up you've got all day nobody's watching exactly you have got 250 people watching <laughs> you so, <laughs> so don't screw it up Susie that's what she's trying to tell me yeah. right I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do oh see right this is why we make spares because I've just broke that one right I'm just gonna fix this side and then I'm gonna stack this so you can see the cake all together because it's such a stunning stencil and then I've got that royal icing again Right, I just need a wee one. These wee ones here. I like to do things properly and nice and even, like what we've got on that side. So we've got that one there. Because what I'll do is, I'm not going to chuck this, I'll fix this. And I might even, um, I'll take some nice photographs for you. Right, so I just need one more little one. I'm just going to pop it in here. And don't forget to go back and just put a little dab in the centre, like it's a little centre um, staring. Okay. Right, so now I'm just going to pop this out of the way. I'm going to get the rest of the cake over and we'll show you what that looks like all together. Because I think it's different to see it on a blue cake as opposed to a white cake too. So if you don't really know my work, I like to do a lot, I like a lot of bridal stuff. But I love the colours and it's not often you get a chance to do it, so this is the perfect opportunity. Okay. 
So these were the tears that I did earlier. Let me just pop that to the side a sec. Oh, 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 I broke a bone. So when you hear that noise, that is the classic sound of sugar flowers breaking. Okay. Sugar flowers, have you broke one of those nice big ones? Have you? Uh, just a little bit, it's okay. <laughs> right, so the reason why I have a hoop on the other end here is because I was actually going to do a different cake a different display cake okay so when I put that together you'll see why this looks so pretty okay and originally I was going to stencil over this this is the imitation gold now normally when you are stenciling on any gold you have to let it cure set properly on your cake for at least about 24 hours because when you stencil over the top it lifts off sometimes um, unfortunately on my test one when I came down the gold leaf that I placed on it last night wasn't set enough and it actually lifted off so if I go ahead and stencil this I am going to wreck it so I'd rather leave it another day or two and then I'll post up the results um, of what stencil I'm going to use on there but this was what the cake was supposed to look like <laughs> okay on the other hand let me just see yeah it's looking really pretty right, I'm going to reveal the cake <laughs> There we go. Wow. Wow. How nice is that? Yeah. So absolutely. that's your three tiers together of your, your stencil. These all come in your set. Um, it also comes with that, the two alphabets so that if you've got an S and an S, then it's fine. Um, and go ahead and embellish, like, make what? So it's I hope absolutely you've enjoyed stunning. That. Stunning. So, it is. And where's the one that you did before? Could that sit on top of it at all? The one, sorry? the one that you, uh, the one that you did um, before, before. I don't think so because no. oh no, it's gonna it won't go on because of the flowers. Right. But it's just such a pretty, pretty cake. Mm. So in fact, what I'll do is I was gonna say just put it on the bottom so we can see it all. So I'll bring that through here da, 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 and turn that round. How nice is that? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But we've got a ribbon on there. You can put some flowers ah, on exactly. there. Exactly, that's your nice Especially intimate wedding Especially if you join your online ah, school. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is what you'll learn in the online school. That is absolutely that, stunning. Adelia, that is Sweet stunning. Sweet Peas, Lysianthus. Yeah. And then on this side, we've got the anemone, David Austin's, foliage, yeah. all the flowers. What a clever girl you are. Yeah. So if there's Beautiful. any questions, keep them coming in. Yeah. So um, you got any questions? Um, someone asked earlier, apparently, but we, I'm not sure if we gave them the answer. Can you use cake lace, cake lace mix instead of royal icing on the stencils? Um, That's a good question. I haven't tried it. You know, it's a bit like, um, I have heard you can use sugar veal as a stencil. However, I haven't done it myself, so I cannot give you a definitive answer. The only way to know that is to try it out. Unfortunately, I personally, I don't think I'd want to because cake lace is really wet and runny mm. and when that get, when you've got a stencil that sometimes your stencils aren't flush to your cake now these are dummies so we've got the best underneath that we can possibly have when you go and ganache a cake or buttercream a cake there's always a little bit of um, anomaly in the, the back of that cake it's not always straight it's maybe got a wee dink in it somewhere when you stencil over that the stencil might not be quite flush to the cake that's a great way for icing to go underneath. If it's runnier, it goes under and it's, it's just horrible. It's an absolute riot. So personally, I would probably not bother for me, but have a go. You'll never know. Yeah, yeah, it's worth having a go. You never know, do you? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, the airbrushing straight on as well, I think, it, you know, it's always worth I, having a I go. I mean, I have done it. Um, I just don't like the effect personally. I'm more of a, if you look at my cakes, you know that I'm like the sharp, the beautiful. Look, look at yours, the yeah. clean, like you'll know what type of person I am, that's me inside. So anything that's a bit fuzzy, I'm not really that keen on, but it doesn't say that there's anything wrong with it. I just don't like it myself. No. No. But your cakes are stunning Nothing. and that's why. Well, I'm a little bit of a control freak perfectionist, yeah, but yeah. Um, I've just seen the night. So I still can, make mistakes. You can try and do it quick way, and we can do it the proper way. I'll bring but I will show. say your cakes, are, your cakes are stunning, and they're worth every bit of the effort. Oh, so for those you. people who want to go all the way and do it the right way, absolutely, they're well worth it. And you know what? They look fabulous on the lie, but they look fabulous in the flesh, don't they? Absolutely. I mean, they you see, like, amazing. I fluffed it up. Like, don't be scared. Like, the thing is, you can make as many mistakes if you have time to correct it. So this is not something that you want to try and learn the night before you're handing in somebody's wedding cake to have a practice for the first hour time you do stenciling. That's going to end in a disaster. You might be lucky, you might make it work. However, practice, practice, practice. Cover some dummies. 
do you know all my cakes there's always something on the back end of them because I'm trying out a different stencil or trying out a different design I've got two designs on this so I've got multiple options here I really wanted to stencil the gold on the bottom but after the mess I made of a little tear um, I realised that, that it was just not going to work quite so well so if you do want to go down the route of the gold leaf make sure it's edible if it's getting et let it cure um, there's lots of tutorials out there on how to attach gold leaf so I'm not going to tell you about that tonight. So yeah, if, if there are any more questions, are we all right? Are we, are we yeah, all there's just that? so many positive comments. Love it. The gold stencil is beautiful. They're stunning. Um, great night. Dying to try it. Um, yeah, there's, honestly, there's so, so many positive comments oh, about the so cakes please. being so beautiful. Thank you. So guys, big thumbs up for Suzanne coming down today. Um, she isn't driving back to Scotland. We have given her a free bed and board. <laughs> just to make her own cup of tea in the morning. So, um, but what's really important is that you guys joined us tonight. She's done an absolutely fabulous demo. I love the display of cakes that she's brought. Again, she's brought them all down for you, for you to see. Do support Suzanne, pop over to her cake page, join it if you want to join the online tutorials. The stencils come from America, there are, so for you Americans over there, you can go onto Evil Cake Genius website, pop in the name Susan Esper on the stencils, drop down, you'll see all the stencils. Now for you guys here in the UK, you can buy them off our website. We are the only stockers who's got them, okay? We've actually brought in, did we bring in six or eight? I can't remember. Um, oh, but anyhow, however remember. many there is, but they're all pretty, they're all on the website there. Um, we have brought limited stocks because I didn't want to go too crazy, but we have brought limited stocks and if they sell really well, then I'm going to keep stocking them as well. Um, I just thought it was something really new for the group. It was a professional element and I'm sure quite a lot of you there want to give it a go because believe me if you are doing wedding cakes you'll want to give these a go they are beautiful you can buy them on the website you can look under brand just look for evil cake genius hyphen Susan Esper um, you can look in shop the same or if you go to our web if you're on our website on the top bars where it says home shop brand go along and see Facebook wish list current drop down to October and Suzanne is in there. So big thumbs up for Suzanne. Thank you. Well done Elaine Lawton for winning uh, the Sugar and Crumbs Bake Off. I bet you're really surprised by that. I was just surprised. So because uh, to be fair, there was lots of you that have done two and three entries. So there's always more chance of those people winning. So that was a really, really nice surprise. I'm looking forward to seeing you all at Cake and Bake on um, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Laura and Maria will be with us as well. We're all wearing our new Sugar and Crumbs stuff. Um, for you big girls, these are not on the website, the big ones. We're up to a size 16. So um, on the website, I think we're doing a size 16. It should be an 18, but we're really honest here at Sugar and Crumbs. And we're saying that they're a bit of a small fit. So um, anybody who wants the bigger ones, I'm not going to tell everyone live what size I am, but anybody who wants the bigger ones, then you need to give the office a call and we can arrange for what you get in one of these. Um, we will have aprons on sale. And then the most amazing news is, is that we are going to start selling Amy's Sugar Sweet Stamps. Is that the right name? Or have I got the right Sweet name stamps. there? Sugar stamps. Sweet, 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 sweet stamps. Sweet stamps. Sweet stamps. There you go. I knew it was something. So um, I will have them at Cake and Bake. So I'm going to try and get them on the website if I can before I go to London. But anybody who wants Amy's um, stamps, I will have them at Cake and Bake on the stand. You'll need to come and see me. Don't where there's on the stand. We'll have the Sugar and Crumbs girls and um, doing the flavoured icing sugar. And I did say to you there that we have done three lots of um, cream cheese. So they're going to be labelled A, B and C. Even Marie and Laura aren't going to know what the recipe is. Okay, and basically we're going to take a vote of what you think is the best one. So make sure you do taste them. Then when you come over, come over and see me for your nifty nozzles because I'll be doing demos. I'm not going to take a big display with me because I end up, I end up decorating all the time when I'm there. So basically I'm going to take the display cases and I'm just going to decorate using each of the nozzles going through them and put them in the display case. I'm going to do a couple of wedding cakes, a dome cake, a few other things, and we're just going to decorate over the weekend. 
um, and then Amy is going to come and spend an hour on the stand on Friday. We're not sure what time. She's going to confirm with me tomorrow or Wednesday. So she's going to come and spend an hour there to talk to you guys. But we'll be selling her stamps all weekend, which is good news. So we're really pleased about that. And if I don't get them on the website this week, I will have them on the website next week. But I will be taking my laptop with me because, as you know, it doesn't matter where I am in the world. I am working. I was even on the plane last night and logged on to the Wi-Fi. So for 16 quid, I spent four hours of my time on the Wi-Fi putting products on. So in the wish list is the Karen Davies Nude Moulds, the Sugar Stars, uh, Sugar Snowflakes, the Winter um, Village, Winter Village, um, Katie Sue's Unicorn Horn and Eyes, and um, Patchwork Cutters, they're not new, but it's her Christmas range. So I put a good selection of those on. So there's plenty of things on there for you to buy, getting yourselves ready for Christmas. And what else do I need to say? Next Thursday. Right, okay, so this Thursday, we won't be doing a live. Um, not here in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen, we'll be on the motorway. But in the afternoon, I am going to do a live. So when the stand is set up and it's ready, we're going to do a little live so that you can see what the stand looks like, okay? And we'll have a little walk around the show and see if we can see any of the exhibitors we know, if they haven't, if they've got there before us or after us. And we'll try and have a little chat with everybody. Um, we won't be able to do any lives on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday because we will be too busy because um, we're always packed. Any of you guys who come uh, to our stand, you know that we're always six deep. If you do want to come and have a chat with me, try and make it as late afternoon as you can because during the day, lots of you guys know I'm just hi, hi, hi. So, and I don't really get a chance to talk to you. So if you do want to come and have a natter, around about four o'clock is a good time. Then I've run off and got a coffee. <laughs> I go hiding. <laughs> I'll leave you with Laura and Maria. <laughs> so anyhow, so I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. It'd be so much fun, really is. And then when we've done that, we're back, we're recovering, and then we're getting ready for Cake International. Cake International is one of the biggest cake shows in the world. It's the most famous cake show in the world. And that is on the first weekend in November, and that is on in Birmingham. So you all need to get ready for that. If you want cake and bake tickets, I've got cake and bake tickets. All you need to do is like and share this live tonight any one of the four episodes will do so, <laughs> um, Maria is gonna have a great job tomorrow putting this all together and basically what we are going to do is we're gonna put it all together put it on YouTube and we will put it on our page as well because you know I'm not gonna pin this to the top today it's a little bit crazy so we'll just make it all into one episode and we'll re put it on the fake on the page as soon as she's done it we'll put it on youtube and then um next monday night we've got jerry back with doing cake lace so i'll ask jerry to make the sequins for you as well so um and i'm sure she's got some good ideas as what she can do with yeah, that yeah. as well as you mm -hmm. so jerry is a lovely lady you saw her doing the cake lace earlier on in the year and she's back on the 8th of october and oh, then on the thursday i think is it me is it me I think it might be me on the Thursday. Not quite sure what I'm doing, but I know I've got lots of things I've thought about doing. So um, I'll discuss that with Laura and Maria when we're in the car on the way to London this week. So anyhow, that's us. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to say goodbye. Is there any questions? No, just lots of people saying thank you for a fantastic demo. And they appreciate us constantly keep retrying. So. Keep trying. I know, it's been a long night. What time is it? Well, actually, it's not bad. It's not too, we've not done too bad. bad. We've not done too bad there. I just really couldn't do a fourth introduction. <laughs> it's like, that's my one from Scotland. You've done a great job. Thank you. So, I know you didn't run to the loo in the live, did you? I did I not know how many times this woman could have a wee. <laughs> So, <laughs> right okay any questions before we go no <laughs> brilliant so go and get shopping guys make sure you buy these stencils i want to wake up tomorrow and know we've sold out and make sure you like and share you can only buy the stencils off us here in the uk so get them bought see you next week bye or at the cake show bye <laughs>